Hi, I'm Reggie, and welcome to Read Tech. Um, today we're going to do something a little bit different. Um, I have recently rediscovered um, the ESP8266. Um, this is a little microcontroller. Um, I went back and looked, and I purchased this device in 2015, September of 2015, so almost exactly six years ago. Um, there was a lot of uh, hype at the time on the internet, and I was like, "Hey, let me see what this is. Uh, what this is about? I'm a tinkerer. I like to uh, play with little, you know, little devices like this." So I purchased this thing from AliExpress for thirteen dollars back then, and I thought, "Man, this is this is going to be pretty cool." So the ESP um, eighty two sixty six is um, it's a Wi Fi um micro controller um perfect for internet of things um type of device because it's got um it's got wi-fi so that's an easy way for it to connect to the network and for you to um send it commands or for it to send back data um and it also has multiple gpio ports so you can add things like um, like I'm about to show you, I have, um, two things, con two devices actually connected to this ESP, um, 8266. Uh, one is an LED and one is a temperature sensor. So, um, I, I don't even know what drove me to, um, to pull this thing out of, you know, a, a storage box. Uh, to start playing with it again, because when I originally uh, picked it up, it wasn't very interesting to me. And I think it was because I was only using the default Node MCU Lua firmware. And I really wasn't into Lua. Um, I wasn't, I didn't want to do any sort of like, you know, coding in, in Lua. Um, and this time, I basically found um figured out that you can use arduino code directly on this um there are setups for the esp um 8266 and and other related chips that um it's pretty cool you it's basically basic c code and this is an embedded platform so you write a program and you compile that pro you build compile slash build that program um it's definitely a build because it's compiling and it's adding um specific header files um or header information uh for the actual file system that gets pushed down to the actual device itself as firmware and that program basically runs until it completes or um like i'm about to show you guys you basically have a continuous loop. Um, so let's take a look at what I've got here. Um, so one of the cool things is there is uh, a Visual uh, Studio Code plugin um, called Platform IO that allows you to do all sorts of Arduino stuff um, inside the beauty and comfort of Visual Studio Code. So we can basically write all of our software um, in this tool, um, actually have it build, fully um, transfer it down to the device itself, and monitor the device. So here's this is a sneak peek preview of basically what we've got going on here you see this is is um uh updating and we have a temperature sensor uh temperature and humidity sensor um and it's printing out the humidity percentage the temperature in both celsius and fahrenheit as well as calculating a heat index on the fly which is which is pretty cool um, and the code is pretty simple. 
Uh, this is C code. I am super rusty um, with C, but I was able to cobble together a couple of different um, examples uh, and, and get it to the point where I could actually publish this code down to the ESP2, ESP8266. Um, and the way that this device actually uh, pushes the temperature data, not only does it print on the serial port, um, which I guess I should notice or, or should mention the fact that this device has a single USB, micro USB port on it, and that's used for both powering the device as well as um, a virtual serial port. So there's a CP2102, I think, um, chip, uh, USB serial chip that's on the development board that I have. And Windows basically just sees it as a serial port. So it's COM3 right now. And that's how I communicate with the board. And that's how the output is, is actually coming into the, um, the monitor uh, portion of Visual Studio Code. So again, this makes for a really nice development environment um, if you want to hack these types of uh, little systems. Um, so the way that this works, so it, I, I have it connect to the, connect to my Wi-Fi, Um, and then I have, um, use this library called PubSub client, which is here. PubSub client is basically an MQTT, um, which is a lightweight, um, publish subscribe system very similar to JMS, where you have specific topics that um, you can both publish data to and um, other, you know, devices, um, displays, what, what have you, can subscribe to those topics. And once it's actually connected to the MQTT um, broker service, which um, for me, just for grins, I'm running it on a Raspberry Pi 4. Um, it can just connect and wait until one of the publishers publishes something to a topic that it is subscribed to. So what we have here are the three topics that the 8266 pushes data to as a publisher to the MQTT server. So it pushes um, humidity to sensor slash humidity. Um, it publishes um, the temperature in Celsius to sensor slash temperature underscore Celsius. And then finally, um, the temperature in Fahrenheit is pushed as sensor slash temperature underscore Fahrenheit. Um, it's pretty cool that all of this works. And again, this device is super duper slow or super, not slow. I'm sorry. It's super cool because it's super small. I meant small, not slow. Um, but once you actually connect, basically there's a loop that where the sensors are being read and it just pushes it out to the, um, you know, to the, to the specific topics that have been set up. So here are the client publishing, um, topics, uh, just to make it a little bit more interesting. I basically have an LED connected to, um, D seven, which is one of the GPIO ports. And, um, just before it publishes all three topics, I turn the LED on, um, then I wait half a second and then I turn it off and basically it goes back and loops again. It waits a second and a half, um, does the temperature reading, 
which DHT is the library that um, that reads from the little temperature sensor that's connected to another GPIO um, on the uh, the 8266 and it just and it runs so this is the actual device it's super small um, so this is the temperature sensor and this is a very very cheap piece of hardware um, it's connected with three different wires one is for power one is ground and one is the gpio signal super super straightforward and then you have the led which as you can see it is turning on and off i think you can see that hopefully you can see that um, and that basically is letting me know like every single time it flashes it is pushing um the data from the temperature sensor temperature and humidity sensor to the three topics and and that's pretty much it i mean but this thing is is ridiculously small um you could put this into a super small box it uses very little power um you know you could slap it up on a wall um, in your garage to, you know, monitor the temperature of your garage or, um, or a patio, or, uh, if you're, you know, if you've got a barn or something like that, just make sure that, um, animals are in a, uh, you know, a, a comfortable, at a comfortable temperature or something like that. Um, it's pretty, pretty freaking cool. Everything that I just showed you so Visual Studio Code is completely free. Um, the Arduino um, libraries and code uh, to build all of this, completely free. The ESP8266, um, they are ridiculously cheap now. Um, I, like I said, I paid $13 um, on AliExpress six years ago. And now um, there's a new version uh, or newer version of this chip that has, um, in addition to Wi-Fi, it also has Bluetooth. Um, and it's the ESP32. I just ordered three of those, and it's a very similar um, form factor. I think it's actually even pin compatible with the ESP8266. Um, and I bought three of them, again, on AliExpress for um for 10 bucks a little bit over ten dollars and that shipped now granted it's going to take a little bit of time for them to um to arrive but um when they do arrive i'll probably recreate this little simple um test uh to make sure that these things are you know everything is working it's a it's a good smoke test for the um for the development boards but yeah this is <laughs> This is re this is really neat to me. Um, oh, and w one other thing. So, the, the I said it was you know we had the MQTT. So we're over here we actually have the temperature um, topic being scrolled on a um, a terminal. So this is the command. Basically, mosquito subscribe. Then it gives the server. So this is the IP address of my Raspberry Pi, and this is the topic sensor, you know, slash temperature underscore Fahrenheit that I want to um, subscribe to. And as you can see, it's reading over here every single time that the 8266 publishes a new Fahrenheit temperature to that topic, it's coming up over here. And we had a little bit, you know, a slight temperature drop 79.88 um, and I can show you that this is actually updating in real time I'll blow on this thing and you can see the temperature went up um, for five degrees temporarily and now since I'm not blowing anymore it is or it should be going down soon.
Yeah, it's going down slowly. So it went up to a peak of 83.48 degrees, and now it's down to 82.04, 81.86. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So anyway, it's a really cool project. Um, if you guys are interested in seeing more of these things, um, I'm thinking about you know trying to come up with some projects to uh, to mess around with this stuff. Um, this is a very good gateway IoT type of uh, type of project. And um, let me know. If, um, if, if you've got some ideas, maybe there's something that I can actually um, create and share with you guys. But anyway, that that is going to do it for this video. Um, you know, I would love it if, um, you know, first of all, thank you. If you're still around at this point in the video, you're my best friend. Um, thank you very much for watching. Um, if you haven't already done it, give me a thumbs up. Um, on the video. Uh, it certainly helps the placement of the video and the YouTube algorithms, all that good stuff. Everything that you hear from every, you know, nearly every other YouTuber. Um, but uh, I appreciate you, you know, you watching my videos and um, subscribing and, um, you know, I hope that I will see you in the next video. Um, have a great day.